yes, as you just heard, yeah, I was in the hospital a couple of times, having a, a new knee, I've told you a bit about that. And um, last time, uh, a few weeks ago, I, I talked about my, my uh, <clears throat> time when I was well, in hospital, thinking about these bodies. What's going to happen? Because <laughs> life is short. Yeah, I, I lost my, uh, my last uncle this week. He lived a long life. He was in his 90s. But he said his life just went very quickly. You know? Uh, and that's, it's not being morbid. That's, that's the reality. You know, and we human beings, we're, we're, we're good at many things. There's one thing that we are terrible at. We, we, we do not think about the future very well. We, we can't project what it's like even next week, let alone five years, ten years at the end of our life. We're not very good at that, are we? And what caused me to think about this, sorry, let me just, just stop. Is anybody doing any translation? Ready? Okay. If I go too fast, can you just wave your hand at me? Okay. Are you translating now? Yes. Okay. So, I'm in hospital, uh, I'm in pain, uh, okay, ladies, sorry, other guys are not very good with dealing with pain, are we? We, we know, you know that we're all you know, not very good, we're all wimps, really. Anyway, uh, uh, we're, in, we're in pain, and I'm thinking, I feel very weak, I feel very old, and I'm in pain. Is this, you know, it's very hard to think outside of where you are at that moment, right? Have you ever been there? you ever had really bad toothache or something like that? You, you, you just think, I can't imagine life without this. And then suddenly you're, you're better. And it's like, whoa. And you forget all about it, don't you? Get all about it. Life's fine now. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and you think, oh, is this it? Is this what life's going to be like? You know? It makes you think, doesn't it? And my, my second visit, obviously, I, I mean, I was with people, older people who were... Uh, they were dying. Their, their, their bodies were failing. They'd lived their life and they were, their bodies were failing. And that, that was, uh, yeah, a serious time for me. So I was talking about my, my um, study, looking into the Bible, what it says about the resurrection body. Where Are you happy you're going to get a new body? Is that good? Yes. yes. Is that, you know, in the morning when you feel a bit <laughs> stiff in the back and you walk, you think... One day I'm going to be, have a new body. So, as proof of that, I'm not going to put my reading glasses on. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So, we, we asked the question last time. Look, you've got a spirit and a soul that's alive in Jesus. And when, when, you, when, when your body dies, you know where you're going, don't you? Do you know where you're going? Yes. Yes. When, the moment you receive Jesus, you know where you're going. Please, if you've got any doubts about your eternity, because your eternity, it is eternity that's waiting for us, give your heart to Jesus. Right now, today. Make sure you know where you're going. I know where I want to be. I'm sure you know where you want to be. And he reassures us. The blood of Jesus says, you're forgiven. You're with me. That's a great moment, isn't it? It's a great moment. We say, look, that's what's going to happen to our spirit and souls. What about our bodies? What will happen to our bodies? So we looked at three scriptures. The first one was John 6. It is the will of the Father to raise up those who believe. The will of the Father. Isn't that great? God, you want to give us resurrection. What does it mean to raise up? It means these bodies, which become old and tired and decrepit, will be, become new bodies, raised. That's what we're talking about. Resurrection is about your body. And then in John 11, Jesus says something very profound. He says, he is resurrection. 
I am the resurrection and the life. Not I resurrect people, which he does, but he is resurrection itself. So, are you in Jesus? You're in resurrection. Is Jesus in you? You've got resurrection already inside of you. It's already your spirit and soul. You know, it's, it's already happened. Now, that's what we do in baptism, isn't it? We baptise you into the death and the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in November, we've got some baptisms coming. Is that good? Are you ready? Exciting? And then finally we looked at 1 Corinthians 15 and we had a biology lesson. Because Paul says, don't ask silly questions like, what, what's your body going to be like? It's obvious. Right, is it? Okay. Oh, I've never been good at biology. Please teach me. Right, look at the seed. Dusty old dead seed. Goes into the ground. What comes out? This amazing plant or flower, whatever it is, it's, it's so different to this seed, and yet it's come from it. He says, it's obvious, look, resurrection is everywhere, it's all over the planet. Creation works on death, burial, resurrection. Oh, thank you, right. Good lesson. So there's two things that we learned from last time. These bodies will be equipped for the new earth. At the moment, our bodies are in line with this earth. Is this, line, is this earth sick and dying? Yes. Are our bodies sick and failing? Yes. <laughs> okay, so we've got a body that's in line with this earth. What about the new earth? What about the eternal, beautiful place where God's kingdom will come down and we will be with him? That's going to be an amazing... We can have a body that's, that's going to be fitted and our body will be. And it will be this body that will be raised. Now that's a mystery to me. I, I, I don't know how God's going to do that. That's, not a, that's, that's up to him. He's already caused us to be born of God already, hasn't it? So I mean, that's, the, that's the miracle in, in our life. I'm sure we can have another miracle, you know, and more and more and more every day. So he will raise up this body that you're wearing now. And that will be the sign that death is finally defeated. So hallelujah. Because God and death are enemies. I always remember, I don't know how old I was, maybe I was four or five, just beginning to think about things, maybe I was six, saying to my dad and my mum, I think it was my mum, mummy, why do people die? It didn't seem right to me didn't seem what ought to happen. And I think in my young naivety I was right. That was, we weren't meant to die. We're going to live forever with new bodies. Yet, yeah, so for, for the believer in Jesus, dying is the door to having a new body and having a new eternity so now when you've got 9 or 10 hours in A&E you can do a, a bible study on the resurrection body you can also think about other things as well so this is part 2 of my A&E thinkings, is that ok? yeah, none, none, 10 hours in, in A&E is pretty tough if I'm honest <laughs> <laughs> You've never experienced it. So, so, after looking at these scriptures, I thought, well, hang on a minute. Why did Paul write about this subject in, in these two books? He, he writes in, in, in these two letters. He writes about them in, in the book of Corinthians. Why was he writing about this wonderful... So it's very inspiring. Uh, I hope you find it inspiring. Why was he writing about the resurrection body in Corinthians? Well, I'll tell you what I think. The Corinthians were a wild bunch. They were very much into their spiritual gifts, weren't they? But also, they were, came from a place of a, a city of a lot of 
immorality and sin. And they hadn't quite got their morals right. They needed to understand that what you do with your body matters. What you do with your body matters. Okay? I think when we get before the throne of God and we're with everyone before the throne of God who loves, who loves Jesus, we won't regret having made a single decision for God, will we? We won't regret having decided to be pure and holy for God. I don't think we have a single regret about turning our back on sin. I think we'll say, oh God, thank you. Thank you. You know, and these Corinthians, they were involved in sexual sin. They were basically permitting sexual sin. You know, it wasn't just small stuff, it was big stuff. So he was saying, look, one day you're going to be there. What you do now is really important. So bless you, if you're struggling with anything, we, we all have in our lives. Take the blood of Jesus. Take the power of the Holy Spirit. Take the encouragement of your brethren. Every decision for Jesus is just so important. The other book is Thessalonians. Thessalonians are quite different to the Corinthians. It says that when Paul arrived, they gave him a warm welcome. And so he really loves them. If you read the book of Thessalonians, you realise Paul really loves the Thessalonians. And he says something like, I can't come to see you. I love you. I want to come and see you. He says, we could stand it no longer. <laughs> we could bear it no longer. So I said Timothy to you. He really wants to go and see them. He can't see them. He's basically saying, look, you guys, I'm getting old now. If I don't see you here, I want to see you there. I want to see you before the throne of God. I'm telling you about resurrection because we're all going to be resurrected and we're going to stand together before the throne of God. Is that good? So, here we are here, Well of Life family, and, um, and, and, and many that was great praying for family and praying for other, for all, all the Christians, all, all the Christian family are going to be gathered together on that day. Wouldn't it be great to be together on that day? So, here we are, with rejoicing together, being a family here. What about all those people that we don't now see? How many people have we had th just through these doors over the years, over the last 20 years? Thousands. <laughs> Thousands. Where are they now? Will we see them? Will, will we be together? Oh, I really hope so. Think of somebody now. Think of someone that you miss. Think of someone that you pray for and long for. You know? Many, 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 many. That's what he's saying. He's saying, I, I just want to be there with you. That's his whole heart. Okay. So let's have a look at a couple of scriptures to do with appearing before the throne of God. This is Jesus talking in John 5. I tell you the truth, those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. Hallelujah. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death into life. And I assure you that the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when the dead will hear my voice, the voice of the Son of God, and those who listen will live. The Father has life in himself, and he's granted that same life-giving power to his Son, and he's given him authority to judge everyone, because he is the Son of Man. Don't be so surprised. Indeed, the time is coming when all the dead in their graves will hear the voice of God's Son and they will rise again. Those who have done good will rise to experience eternal life 
and those who continued in evil will rise to experience judgment. I can do nothing on my own. I judge as God tells me. Therefore my judgment is just because I carry out the will of the one who sent me, not my own will. Wow. So Jesus has been given the authority by God the Father to judge all people. And we must arrive there with our sins already judged. When you believe in Jesus, your sins are judged on the cross. One of my relatives said to me once, oh, I'm not bothered with that. I'll sort it all out when I get there. I thought, it's going to be too late. We have our sins judged now. Every knee will bow on that day before Jesus. That's, that's what he's saying. Every knee, every knee will bow. Everyone will say that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus has been given the authority to judge. And he will do it perfectly. This is painful, isn't it? I said I, I lost my uncle this, this week. He... he he wasn't a believer. That's painful for me. I'm sure you have, we all have, relatives, friends that we long for. All, all we can do, what we can do is say, God, <laughs> this is in your hands. This is too big for me. Yeah, <laughs> I often say that. God, <laughs> Jesus, you're the judge. You're in charge. Let's have a look at Revelation. Revelation 7, this is John describing this event of us appearing before the throne. After this I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation and tribe and people and language, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands. Just, part, just pause a moment, it, it takes longer to read it than faster. And they were shouting with a great roar, Salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. Salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. Amazing. Talks there about wearing white robes, doesn't it? Okay, what's that about? White robes? Made clean, made pure by the blood? Properly dressed for the occasion? Your resurrection body? <laughs> have you ever had one of those um, times when you've been evangelising? I'm sure you have. All of us have had this. Maybe in the streets of Coventry or Birmingham or Kettering or Northampton. And some guy, some person comes to you, probably has had a few drinks. I, I, I'm not very good at, at imitating drunk people, so uh, I won't, I won't do this. Says so to me like, you tell him to come down right here. You can, I'll believe when he comes down right here, right now. Or something like that. You know, and you think, if God came down here right now, you would evaporate. <laughs> no one can stand before God and live. In these bodies, everybody would just, we would, we would fry people. these new bodies and here's the thing these new resurrected bodies we're going to be able to look 
be at the throne of God and see Jesus face to face. Isn't that amazing? (laughs) The white robes clothed in a wonderful new spiritual body. It's going to be a great celebration, isn't it? And uh, Jesus tells a, a parable of a big wedding feast and about a man who tried to get in who wasn't wearing the right robes and, and was thrown out, you know. In other words, we have to have the right robes. It's the resurrection body that Jesus gives us. Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's have a look and see what uh, Paul says about this subject. This is his love for the Thessalonians that I was talking about. We wanted very much to come to you, and I, Paul, tried again and again, but Satan prevented us. After all, what gives us hope and joy, and what will be our proud reward and crown as we stand before our Lord Jesus when he returns? It is you. Yes, you are our pride and joy. We had the song, didn't we? For you are our glory and joy. Remember that one? By the way, it was great seeing Mighty the Gospel, Andy. It was so good. Thank you. Um, we don't know fully what our rewards will be in, in heaven. We don't know quite how that's going to all work out. But for, but, but for sure what he's saying here is, look, our reward will be our friends, those we've helped in Jesus, those that we've prayed for and cried over. Imagine that joy of being together. Yes! <laughs> We're there! <laughs> you know? Um, I've got many um, heroes, um, heroes in the, in the Christian faith. It says that the godly, the godly are our heroes, isn't it? In the in the uh, in the Psalms. Um, <clears throat> who's heard of a man called Billy Bray? Anybody? Billy Bray. Billy Bray was from Cornwall. Cornwall. And he was converted in 1823. And he was uh, a tin miner. And he was a very down to earth guy. And when he found Jesus, well, he used to be a drinker, but then he found Jesus. He was a man who was known of having great joy. Do you have time of sudden joy? And um, you can have a great outburst of joy. You can be feeling cold and have a great outburst of joy. <laughs> it's for, human beings are so funny, aren't they? I'm sat here. We've got people over that side of the room wearing their winter jackets who are cold. And people on this side of the room by the door in, in, in T-shirts. <laughs> it's so funny. That's <laughs> sad. Oh dear. Human beings are wonderful. We are all different, aren't we? Please do bring your warm winter jacket with you if you feel the cold. If you don't, just wear a t-shirt. Anyway, outbursts of joy. And uh, what he would do is, if he was, if he was here today, he'd probably side look to you like, like between Dave and Stevie here. And he'd ask Dave, he'd say, you know, say, uh, you know, do you know Jesus? Are, you, are your sins forgiven? And if you said yes, he'd suddenly shout, Glory! Hallelujah! And he'd probably pick you up yeah. and start running around the room. <laughs> okay? Because he just had this great flooding of joy. You're saved. You're in Jesus. You know, I think we may have lost something of that. We've, we've all been around, the, you know, doing, being Christians for so long, you know, we go through things, that disappointments and stuff. But that, that 
experience of joy. You know? We are a room full of miracles, aren't we? <laughs> How many wonderful testimonies are there in this room? Everyone is a miracle. Every one of us is born of God. Every one of us is saved by the blood of Jesus. Every one of us is going to have a resurrection body. I think we can all afford to be like Billy Bray, can't we? Mm-hmm. Amen. Let's, uh, let's have a look at uh, one more scripture from Paul and then we'll, we'll draw to a close. 1 Thessalonians 3 May God our Father and our Lord Jesus bring us to you very soon. He's, he's really wanting to see them, isn't he? And may the Lord make your love for one another and for all people grow and overflow. Just as our love for you overflows. He's really <coughs> laying on me saying, look, I really love you. Your love for one another should really be like mine. Overflow. May he, as a result, make your heart strong blameless and holy as you stand before God our Father when our Lord Jesus comes again with all his holy people. Amen. May he make your hearts strong, blameless and holy. Now Steve talked about loving earlier and it was good, wasn't it? And he said, we don't do very well. No, we don't do very well. That's why we need Jesus. Jesus does very well. And he's resurrected inside of you. And you're in him. And you've got this love. And any time you can say, God, I don't love very well. You better love through me. Please help me. Help me to love this person. Hassan, can I tell you a story about your your neighbour? Is that okay? Is that okay? Yeah, thank you. I asked for some testimonies in Catch the Fire. I said, tell me about something that God is doing in your life. Tell me about a miracle in your life. And Hassan said, oh, Steve. (laughs) He said, I live in this house, two or three Iranians, whatever, an African man. He said, there is this one man. Oh, we are always arguing and I read the Bible and it says you must love people Steve I can't do it (laughs) I thought Hassan is just saying what everybody thinks anyway (laughs) and and then he said I said you know God is God is doing a work in you Hassan You, you, you better you better pray pray for this man and pray for Jesus to, to help you. And then a couple of weeks later he says, he said to me, Steve, it's a miracle. <laughs> he said, I've got a new best friend. <laughs> I said, is it, is it, is it the guy in your house? He said, yes! <laughs> That's precisely it. That is precisely it. That's it. You see, because... Jesus does it. Jesus makes us blameless. Jesus makes us holy. Jesus, that's the whole point. We, we, we fail miserably. Jesus does it for his people. And we're going to arrive on that day before the throne of God with souls that are washed clean, pure, made blameless by the blood of Jesus, with bodies that match these souls. Our souls and our bodies will both be glorious like his. At the moment, sometimes you can feel like two people, can't you? There's the, there's the inner joy and there's the things going wrong. <laughs> and Paul says, well, that just shows, you know, that this, this resurrection power, it can shine out. That is true, isn't it? It can shine out. But what's going to happen when you've got a body that matches the glory of your redeemed spirit and soul. Wow, you're going to shine, man. (laughs) You're going to shine, just like Jesus. Let's have a look at it. This is the final scripture. 
This, in fact, it's in Daniel. This is interesting. Daniel 12. Many of those whose bodies lie dead and buried will rise up, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting disgrace. Yes, we know that, don't we? Those who are wise will shine as bright as the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever. Oh, hallelujah. Oh. Yeah? You're going, to get, you're going to have a new body. Resurrected body. <laughs> Is that good? <laughs> so, there's four things to remember. Number one, it's going to be this body that's going to be raised. That's God's miracle. And death will be defeated on that day. Number two, the, your body is going to be fitted for the new earth. Perfect for eternity. Number three, our bodies and our souls will perfectly complement each other. They will reflect the glory of God. And number four, these bodies, these new bodies, will be able to stand in the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. Great. That's just, uh, I know we have a blessing at the end, right? Who's doing the blessing at the end? Uh, Matthew. Matthew did, didn't he? Okay, we have, can, do you mind if you have two blessings today? <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure? Is that all right? Okay. But let's have a let's have a, a blessing before the blessing. Okay. I was going to pray. And I thought, no, no, no. Let's let's. Well, I tell you what. Shall we read this out together? Yeah. Okay. So there's one first, one first name is five. One, on 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 three, we'll read this together. One, two. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Amen. Hallelujah.